In Blues Piano Tutorial Part 1, we learned this right hand blues riff. We also looked at this right hand blues lick. As well as this left hand bass line. In Blues Piano Tutorial Part 2, we learned this right hand blues riff. In Blues Piano Tutorial Part 3, we looked at this right hand blues riff. As well as this right hand blues lick. In Blues Piano Tutorial Part 4, we learned this right hand blues riff. As well as a couple of different variations. In Blues Piano Tutorial Part 5, we looked at this right hand riff. Again, with a couple of different variations. Another right hand blues riff that you can use with this bass line, or any other for that matter, is this. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm playing the note D and G together. Then from here, I'm going to hold down G and I'm going to play the note E flat. Then I'm going to come back down to D. So we have. Then I'm going to play the note C. Then from here, I'm going to go down and play A. Then G. Then A again. Then I'm going to play G and C together. So we have D and G. Hold down G, play E flat, D, C, then play A, G, A, then G and C together. The fingers I'm using to play this riff, I'm using the index finger on D and the little finger on G. Then while holding down G with the little finger, I'm going to play E flat with the middle finger, D again with the index finger, C with the thumb, then I'm going to play A with the middle finger, G with the index finger, A with the middle finger, then G with the index finger and C with the little finger. So again the fingers you could use are the index finger, and little finger for D and G. Hold down G with the little finger, play E flat with the middle finger, D again with the index finger, C with the thumb, then cross over with the middle finger to play A, G with the index finger, play A again with the middle finger, then G and C with the index finger and little finger. To counter this riff, you could count it as one and two and three and again one and two and three and one more time one and two and three and so what you want to do is you want to make sure you play the C here on the AND of beat 1, so 1 AND, 1 AND, so 1 AND 2 AND 3 AND, so you want to play the G and the C together on the AND of beat 3, and you don't want to hold it down, you just want to play it like this, so 1 AND 2 AND 3 AND. 
Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to look at two different variations. And what we're going to do is we're going to add a chord at the end of the actual riff itself. So here's the actual riff. Then when we get to the end, we're going to start with variation one. And for variation one, we're going to play a C6 chord. And we're going to play E, G, A, and C. And we're going to play them together as a chord. So this is a C6 chord. So again, the notes are E, G, A, and C. And I'm using the thumb on E, the index finger on G, the middle finger on A, and the little finger on C. So this is variation one. And to count to it, you could count one and two and three and four and. And what I like to do is hold down the chord for the next bar. So you want to play the chord on the end of beat four. So one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. One more time. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. So that is variation one. Variation two, we're going to play an F9 chord. So you start the riff as normal. Let me count to that. One and two and three and four and. So the notes for the F9 chord are E flat, G, A and C. So you might notice that all you need to do to get from this C6 chord to the F9 chord is just push in slightly and place the thumb on E flat. And then the other fingers are the same. So you've got G with the index finger, A with the middle finger, and C with the little finger. So the only difference between the C6 chord and the F9 chord is the E to the E flat. C6, F9. So again, to counter this, one and two, And just like with variation one, you'll want to hold down the chord for the remainder of the next bar. And again, you would want to play the chord on the end of beat four. So we have the riff itself, one and two and three and four and. Then we have variation one, which we have as C6. One and two and three and four and one and two and three. And four and. Then we have the F9, which is variation two. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to add the left hand. But what we're going to do is we're not going to start the first time we play the riff in the right hand until bar two. So we start the left hand. So bar one, and then we'll start the riff on bar two. And another little thing is deciding whether you want to use variation one, C6, or variation two, F9. It depends on where you're going in the left hand. So if you're going to stay on the one chord or C, then you'll want to play variation one, C6. If you're going to play the four chord or the F, you'll want to play variation two, which is the F9 chord. So what we're going to do is we're going to start on bar two. So one and two and three and four and then bar two. One and two and three and four and and then because we're going to C again, we'll play the C6 chord. So one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. And then what we're going to do is we're going to play the 
right hand riff again, but this time on bar four. So one and two and three and four. And because we're going to F this time in the left hand or to the four chord, we're going to play the F9 in the right hand. So four and one and two and three and four and so on. So that's how it works with deciding whether you choose variation one or two. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the 12 bar blues form. So bar one, then we're going to play variation one on bar two. So bar two, then bar three is on its own. Then we're going to play variation two on bar four. Then we're going to start bar five on its own, bar five and down the chord, five. Then we're going to play variation one on bar six, because we're going back to C. So this will be bar seven on its own while holding down the chord. And then on bar eight, we're going to play the riff on its own for bar eight. We're going to play the riff on its own for bar nine. Then we're going to finish with variation one for bar 10, because that leads back to C for bars 11 and 12. So in context, bar one, bar two, three, bar four, bar five, bar six, bar seven, bar eight, Bar 9, bar 10, bar 11, then bar 12. So again, we're playing the variation 1 for bar 2, variation 2 on bar 4, variation 1 on bar 6, then we're playing the riff itself for bars eight, nine, and then we're playing variation one for bar 10. So I'll play through again, but this time I'll just play through as normal. So bar one, bar two, three, bar four, bar five, bar six, bar seven, bar eight, bar nine, bar 12 and now play through without counting a little slower <laughs> 